Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen for week three of the CSA box. This is Licorice, if you don't know Licorice. She's in the kitchen looking for her own food, but right now we are meal prepping for my week. I know. Um, I've got my slow cooker over there. It's a little hot in here, so I was literally just slow cooking some chicken breast. Really, really easy. You just keep an eye on it, but then I don't have to use the oven or watch it on the stove, hands off, which is nice. And I'm gonna show you everything that I got in my box this week. And we're going to meal prep some breakfast for the rest of the week. Yes. Do you want to help me cook breakfast? She's over it. Yeah, she's done. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to, yes, I'm going to meal cook, meal prep some breakfast for the week. I'll show you what I've got. I'll show you what we're doing. Do you want to show everybody what's in the bag? No. Okay. Uh, this week I got some more scallions. For breakfast this morning I made scallion pancakes. It's a really great Asian recipe. I, I just kind of eyeballed it and made it up. Um, mine was a little bit more of a regular pancake, like an eggy pancake, than the really nice doughy pancakes that you get for, from scallions. So if you're still wondering what to do with your scallions, that's what I did. And then I'll show you um, there's a bunch of different toppers and things that you can do in some of the cookbooks that I have. I have some beautiful basil. One of my favorite things to snack on ever, some snack peas. I love snack peas. Some wonderful squash, some zucchini squash. broccoli with all of these lovely greens still attached and I think I was supposed to get more lettuce this week but I saw that Thai basil was available so I swapped it out. Thai basil is not the same as sweet basil. I went to the grocery store today and I got some things so that I can make some stir fry this week. It is um, so if you see it in the store and you're curious about it. Right, so like regular basil. Mm. A little sweeter. And the Thai basil. Oh yeah. The Thai basil has way more of that anise kind of licorice flavor. Mmm. Very good. But on the back end still tastes like the regular basil that you love. But this is just sweeter. This is nice because I guess it's more pungent for some stir fry recipes. So I found, um, I think there's some good like curry recipes that this would be good in. So excited for that. All right, so what we're gonna use today is we're going to use the broccoli. I'm going to make a frittata for myself for the rest of my week's breakfast. Um, and then I will save the greens to make a greens dish. And then also, if you're not sure what to do, I love the stems. You just kind of clean them up and peel them a little bit. And then I slice them and I put them in the oven or the air fryer and just have these nice little like medallions. They're, they're really good. I just do some salt and pepper. All right, so this is what we're gonna use today. And I'm gonna take a moment to put everything else away and then I'll grab this week's cookbooks to show you some ideas for some of the recipes I think there were some different things in the larger boxes, so I'll go over what to do for those too, if you're not sure what to do with your cauliflower or your beets. All right, so hang on one second. Okay, so I have a very large pile of cookbooks this week because I got excited. The first one is literally called Turnip Greens and Tortillas, so if you still have radishes and the beets, the broccoli greens, the turnip greens, um, just goes to show that you can do wonderful things with turnip greens. Um, so this recipe is lit literally called Eddie's Turnip Greens, and it's your greens, butter, onion, garlic, ground chili or cayenne pepper, diced tomatoes, and chicken stock, and it's, it's delicious. Sounds great. Uh, what was the other recipe I found in this book? Oh, I have two. Um, 
for if you have beets, these foil roasted beets and Vidalia onions with butter, lime, and sea salt. So roast the beets, they become delicious. I'll show you the picture if you don't believe me. If you're not sure what to do with beets. And this one sounds great if you got cauliflower this week. Roasted cauliflower with jalapenos and blue cheese. I do not think that I would have ever come up with that flavor combination on my own, but it sounds great. Um, so you roast to bring out the sweet nuttiness of the cauliflower, and you toss the florets with oil, um, chili, and onions. You roast it, and then you, you roast the jalapenos in there as well. And then when everything is all roasted and really soft and golden brown, you toss it into a serving bowl with your blue cheese and butter and just everything kind of slightly melts. That sounds amazing. Um, I'm definitely gonna keep this recipe for myself. The next one is Simply Genius um, by Kristen Migliore. This is a Food 52 cookbook. This is actually the second version of this cookbook that we have had because the first one was so well loved that it got destroyed. So uh, the recipe that I saved here is lentils folded into yogurt, spinach, and basil. So great, we got basil this week. I believe you can still get spinach in the CSA store. And if you have one of the larger shares, you're probably still getting spinach in general. Um, so this is just like a big bowl of chopped walnuts, baby spinach, fresh basil leaves, lentils that have been cooked. Of course, if you got parsley in your box, you still don't know what to do with it, you have some parsley in this recipe too. Garlic, lemon, Greek yogurt, olive oil, um, and then you can serve it either on toast or in a lettuce cup. And then some Parmesan cheese on top, it sounds amazing. And then this one, again, this is great for all of your greens if you don't know what to do. I know it's kind of hot out the last couple of days, but there are some people who like to have soup any season. <laughs> um, this is great. It's tiny pasta with tender herbs, chickpeas, and yogurt. So it's not like a hearty winter soup. This is really great for this time of year. So it's a, a ditalini pasta, something small like a macaroni chicken stock, butter, anchovy fillets, garlic cloves, six cups of roughly chopped tender herbs or greens and, and or, so you can mix and match. So you can grab some dill, parsley, basil, arugula, radish tops, beet tops, turnip tops, and you can mix and match them all in there. Obviously keep in mind if you're using herbs like dill, parsley, and basil, it is going to influence your flavor a little bit more. So just check the balance based off of what you like but all of your greens from your vegetables, if you're not sure what to do with them, can go into a dish like this. Um, and then of course some chickpeas and you top it with lemon zest, lemon juice, and yogurt. So I'll show you so you can get an idea. It's just a bunch of greens in there. It's super healthy. The chickpeas give you protein. It's awesome. Oh, I just lost the page of whatever the other thing was that I was gonna do. All right, I'm never gonna remember what it was because I've got so many recipes to go through. Here we go. Uh, this is It's Not Complicated by Katie Lee Beagle. I believe I've used this cookbook once before in book cooks. I don't remember what it was. Uh, this one is exactly perfect for this week. Roasted beet and beet green salad with herbs, goat cheese, and bacon. So in this salad, you use both the beets and their greens. Um, and this is filled with, again, stuff that is in the CSA store. So it's beets baby kale, parsley, cilantro, mint, and then goat cheese, bacon, pomegranate seeds, roasted pistachios, and then there's a Dijon vinaigrette dressing recipe. That sounds delicious. Um, I did make the Otolenghi date and orange salad. Of course, I didn't have everything that was supposed to be in there, all of the herbs and everything, but I did the oranges, the dates, the radishes from the box, the arugula from the box, and I made a nice warm dressing. It was delicious. Um, broccoli green curry coconut soup. So for the broccoli and you want to do something a little different, this is a coconut curry soup. 
Um, and then it also uses the cilantro leaves and the Thai basil. So that's awesome. Um, you use the stalks and the florets in this recipe. And then again, you save the greens for maybe roasting or putting into that delicious soup, whatever it is. So I will probably make, well, I'm gonna use most of the broccoli and the frittata, but maybe I will save the stalks for some kind of um, like bootleg version of this curry soup because I do have Thai green curry paste and I do have those Thai basil leaves, so I can kind of make a, a version of it with what's left over. All right, next, this is a new cookbook. This is called Plant Based India. Uh, Nourishing Recipes Rooted in Tradition by Dr. Sheel Shukla. And the one that I wanted to share in this was, again, just another creative way to think of cauliflower. You don't have to just plain roast it. You don't have to boil it. You don't have to make it boring. You don't have to serve it in a crudite tray. This is chili cauliflower and tofu. If you don't like tofu, you can do little cubes of chicken as well. It would be just fine. But it's um, got a great sauce recipe. It's soy sauce, maple syrup, tomato paste, rice vinegar, sriracha, cornstarch, and black pepper, and then you stir fry it with ginger, garlic cloves, scallions, dried red chilies, and then you put it over jasmine rice. You could also make lettuce cups out of this. That head of romaine that we got last week had really nice hearty leaves, and you can scoop everything right into the lettuce cup, and you can do that as well. Uh, this is Everyday Cook by Alden Brown. And what did I have here? Um, this is the Char Burgers, and I wanted to highlight this just because it is a um, it is a burger made with boneless, skinless Arctic char fillets. So it's a seafood burger, and you know you always think of putting scallions on top of things for garnish. The scallions are actually mixed into the the meat mixture that you're doing here. Um, and then of course you can top it as well. But so it's your, your Arctic char cut into cubes. You put it in a mixing bowl. You add panko, scallions, bell pepper, horseradish. If you did spice up your kitchen this month, you could put your horseradish in here. Egg white, some furikake seasoning, salt and pepper. So that sounds absolutely amazing. There were some other things in this cookbook too about like what he likes to garnish with scallions. Grits with shrimp, he likes to, uh, a mushroom stroganoff, he likes to top with scallions. It sort of brightens up that heavy sauce. Um, a chili salsa, pho, and um, did I say the grits with shrimp? Yeah, so. If you ever watched Book Cooks in its previous iteration, you know that when I take out my Kindle, it is time for my favorite cookbook ever, which is the America's Test Kitchen Cookbook. We do have it at the library, but I loved it so much, and it is such a large cookbook that I bought it and put it on my Kindle. Um, there are some recipes for beets in here, um, and simple. I love the thing that I love about this cookbook is it'll give you a basic recipe and then maybe have two or three pages of, you can change it by doing this. You can use this base recipe and then make this. Um, so it's, it's beets, and I assume it's a roasted recipe, but you can do with lemon and almonds, lime and pepitas, orange and walnuts, and then um, my landlord actually made this recipe and shared it with me. Like she shared a couple servings with me um, when I brought the cookbook home for her. Um, these pinto bean burgers. So they are vegetarian burgers and the beets give them the, the red color like meat, but they're made with pinto beans and I can't remember what else. Um, My Kindle updated and I'm not totally sure how it works anymore. Anyway, okay. <laughs> um, it's made with bulgur, beets, walnuts, basil, leaves, garlic cloves, pinto beans, a jar of carrot baby food. You can also puree your own if you'd like. Whole grain mustard, breadcrumbs, and then um, some oil, I guess, to put it all together and fry it in a pan. It is delicious. These burgers are so good and they go very well with um, blue cheese and endive goat cheese and arugula, spiced yogurt, and watercress. So there you go. 
Um, but this cookbook is great because almost any single ingredient that you may have, you can go look it up in the index of the book and you will find a ton of recipes. Um, so I'm going to go to the broccoli section. Oops, I went too far. No, I didn't. Okay, it's a very extensive index. It gets a little confusing. Here we go, broccoli. Um, broccoli and beef stir fried with oyster sauce, broccoli and cheddar skillet chicken with rice, uh, broccoli and cheese soup, chicken mushrooms, uh, oh, this is a Thai green curry with chicken and mushrooms and broccoli. Um, skillet chicken with ziti and broccoli. Um, and just a basic recipe for roasted um, and roasted with garlic. And then the one that we're gonna do is the feta frittata. used to be that you could just tap on the screen and it would take you to what you tapped on, but I'm not entirely certain why it doesn't let you do that anymore. There we go. And then I like, if you've never seen these cookbooks, the first page of each recipe is why does it work? What are the flavor combinations and the cooking methods that make it so good? Um, I have never tried a bad recipe from here. There's also one other broccoli recipe that I did a long time ago in book hooks, I'll have to see if it's on YouTube. It might have been in the very early days where I only streamed on Facebook, but it was a broccoli cheddar wild rice fritter. I can't remember which cookbook it was from. Might have been from, I don't remember. It might have been Half Baked Harvest or, um, I'm not sure. I don't, don't want to say, but. I'll have to see if I can find that video and I'll link it in the description box. Those were amazing and it was just broccoli and wild rice and cheddar was so good. They were very wonderful. All right, here we go. Uh, this frittata can be served warm or at room temperature and when paired as a salad, it can serve as a meal. Honestly, I think it's a meal on its own. It's got a little bit of fat from the feta cheese. It's got the protein from the eggs and I'm gonna beef it up with egg whites and not just regular eggs. Um, and then it's got your, your vegetables from your broccoli. All right, so what you're supposed to do is you are actually supposed to bake a frittata in the oven. It is warm out today and I do not feel like turning on my oven and I do not feel like emptying out my oven. So I'm just gonna cook it on the stove and I'm gonna cover it with the lid to the, to the pan. So it's not going to be exactly perfect, but it is what it is. All right, so what I'm going to do is, we're going to start by whisking together some eggs, milk, and salt, and then we are going to set that to the side. That's like our base, that's the egg mixture. And we're going to cook the broccoli first with some seasoning. The thing that I like about this recipe that is unique, and again, it's one of those things that why does it work, is you use a little bit of lemon zest and lemon juice to bring all of your flavors together that bit of acidity is really nice with broccoli. And then it's just really simple from there. Then you're going to add everything together, add the feta and the egg mixture to the broccoli, and then you cook it, and then that's it, it's done. So I'm just going to wipe down my cooking surface, and I'm gonna start prepping my broccoli, and then we're gonna get going. Okay, so for today, all I'm going to do is use the broccoli florets. I am going to save for tomorrow the greens. I'm gonna put them in my stir fry if I choose to make that Thai stir fry. And the stems, I think I might put some of them in with uh, the frittata, but like I said, I do like to cut them into little medallions, little coins, and put them in the air fryer with just some oil and some seasoning. They're delicious. So I'm going to just start cutting and prep all of that. Okay, so I have my broccoli chopped up and I'm going to put my greens and stems into a bag back into my refrigerator, like I said, for tomorrow. Okay, so if you are doing this as a traditional frittata where you are going to cook it in the oven, make sure you are using an oven safe pan. The pan that I'm using does happen to be oven safe. Plot twist, it doesn't even fit in my oven even if I did feel like I was gonna turn it on today. Usually when I make a frittata, actually, I put it in a glass pie pan and that's how I do it. But today, like I said, no oven. So I'm going to just heat up some oil into my pan. I'm going to get the broccoli in there and then I'm going to use pepper flakes, red pepper flakes, salt and pepper, 
And while that cooks, we will mix up the egg mixture. So let me go get that started and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I have everything in here. And I'm just going to, as usual, we're gonna toss to coat. Make sure the broccoli is coated in the oil. It's got the seasoning on it as well. You can see I've got the red pepper flakes in here, some salt and pepper. And we're so, so we're going to let this cook until it softens. The broccoli will get some color to it. And I'll just make sure to give it a little bit of a stir every now and then to make sure everything's moving and nothing is burning. But I'm going to go mix up my egg mixture next. Okay, so next we are going to do our eggs and egg whites. Um, I'm also going to toss into this mixture because I like the way it tastes with feta is dill from last week's box. So I'm just gonna take that off the stems and put that in first. Okay, so um, the feta comes towards the end there. Um, eggs. All right, so I've got some whole eggs and then I'm gonna mix it with egg whites because I do eat a lot of protein. All right, I'm gonna hold this up with some egg whites. And then you're also supposed to use some milk so it would be like a creamier kind of egg thing, but not really custard. I don't have milk. I just have almond milk, so I'm going to do that. Um, you're supposed to do about a third of a cup. Okay, and then we're going to whisk it all together. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Alright, so just make sure that this is combined. Make sure your yolks are incorporated with your egg whites. And the next thing that I'm gonna do, my broccoli is pretty much brown on all sides. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna add three tablespoons of water, some lemon juice from my lemon. Just, it, just a little bit, just a splash. It says about a teaspoon more. And we're gonna use the micro planer that I use all the time for garlic and ginger. We're gonna use that to grate some lemon zest in there. So we're gonna do that next. Now that this is all ready to go, let this sit. All right, so we have some color on the broccoli here. It looks really good, but now we want to get it tender through and through. So that's the purpose of the water. Lemon zest. And you want to get just the yellow part. You don't want to get the white part, the pith, because that's bitter and it doesn't have the same wonderful aromatic flavor. Of course, make sure you wash your lemons very, very well before you do this. And this is the zest. It has all of the flavor from the lemon oils. It's just a really pure, pure flavor. All right, so let me get, I'm going to just cut the lemon and squeeze a little juice in here. Okay. And so now the recipe says that you're supposed to stir constantly until the water is dissolved and your broccoli is tender. So this is a great technique. Like I said, you've got the flavor from the browning of the broccoli, but we will get it cooked all the way through so that it's tender. Because sometimes when you're going just for that browning, which is a delicious flavor, that kind of roasty toasty flavor, you don't always cook it all the way through, so your, your vegetables are not always totally tender and they're a little chewy and a little hard to eat. The water is almost all gone. I am just adding some feta into my egg mixture and then just in another minute or so, it will be ready to add in. Okay, so now I'm going to dump my egg and feta mixture right over the top. So you're going to move this around a little bit at first. Just to kind of get that egg curd formed and moving around a little bit. And then you would 
put it in the oven and bake it, not even for that long, I think it's less than 10 minutes, it says it will take a little bit longer for me because I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to keep it on the oven, I mean on the stove instead of in the oven, so it's not going to have that quite as even baking all the way around, but that's okay. So what I'm doing is the outsides are cooking faster than the inside, of course, so that's why I'm kind of scraping from the outside in and pushing some of that looser egg mixture to the outsides and the more cooked stuff to the center. Okay, I'm going to turn my heat down. There we go, it's starting to set up all that egg curd. So. Now is a good time for you to put this in the oven. For me, I'm going to put the lid on and let it go until it is solid. Okay, so in the amount of time that it took for me to tidy up a little bit from my weekly meal prep, I had mine all totally cooked. Mine is going to look a little different than yours because I did do all egg whites and I didn't do it in the oven. If you are doing just regular eggs, you'll see yours is obviously more yellow. I don't know if mine puffed up a little bit more because of the egg whites as well. Um, and also yours from the heat of the oven might have a little nice browning on top. Mine kind of like steamed in there. So it's a little different, but this is a nice hearty slice of protein and vegetables and the feta. And I'm really excited to try this. And I love, like I said, I added the dill on top. Don't be afraid to get creative. Mm. It is so good. It is so well seasoned with the salt and pepper. The red pepper flakes, it's not spicy, it's just kind of a little warm in there. The dill is a really nice contrast to the salty brininess of the feta cheese. I didn't need to add that much salt or anything like that. It was just a little bit of salt when I was cooking the broccoli, a little, like two pinches of salt when I made the, um, the egg batter, and then the, the briny saltiness of the feta carries the rest of it through. I cannot taste the lemon, but I can taste the flavors of the broccoli, and that is because of the lemon juice and the lemon zest. So good. The, the broccoli is totally cooked through without turning to mush. This is a delicious frittata. Like I said, I've done frittatas before, but I never elevate them. Oh, I got a little red pepper flake in there. It's just nice and warm. It really rounds it all out. Usually when I do something like this for my meal prep for the week, I just kind of toss whatever I have in there and I don't ever think about the flavor profile. So by adding the feta, the red pepper flakes, and the lemon zest, I've elevated this dish. This is so good and it definitely makes a big difference that the broccoli was browned in the frying pan first. It adds a little bit of nuttiness in there. This is delicious. So it just goes to show, again, like I keep saying, you don't need to do anything super complicated with these boxes, but if you're at a loss and you're tired of salads or steaming your vegetables, use a recipe from a cookbook or our digital resources. There are tons of cookbooks on Libby and Hoopla as well. Um, you can, of course, go ahead and go to a search engine and search for some recipes, maybe use the names of the recipes that I've given you today to inspire your search to think creatively, but it will just get you seasoning and trying new things with your vegetables, especially if maybe you're on your third week of spinach and you're not sure what to do with it. All right, that is it for me for week three of our CSA box. I am so delighted by these boxes, so thanks again to the green team for helping to arrange that we get this here in town, the nice, easy delivery at the library. It's so wonderful. Um, I'm really enjoying all of my fresh, fresh vegetables, and I hope you are as well. Don't forget to come on into the library and check out our cookbook section and all of the awesome things that we have coming up for summer. 
it is summer reading kickoff week, especially we are really kicking it off on Friday the 23rd. So check our website for information on how to participate in summer reading for kids, teens, and adults. The raffles that we have going all summer long and also our events calendars are now linked on the front page of our website. So check it out. Come on in and visit us this summer. We can't wait to see you. All right, everyone. See you next time.